Hi, welcome back to the Unit 11 Probability and Statistics Review Examples. We are on the final page of our review, starting with number 10. The nine starting hitters of the baseball team are lining up for a picture. What is the probability the oldest player is not first? Okay, so I want the probability that the first player we're going to choose is not the oldest player. Okay, that comes first. All right, so there are nine starting hitters, which means there's one who's the oldest. So how many are favorable? Eight of them. Because there's one who is the oldest, I don't want him to be him to be first, right? So eight favorable, because one of them is the oldest, out of nine total. Okay, so eight out of nine, that I don't believe reduces math make it a pretty fraction eight over nine math make it a decimal multiply it by a hundred to make it a percentage so if they're just randomly lining up for a picture they're just running around not not trying to make a certain shape or anything in their pictures not lining up by height or anything it's totally random then we will have 88.9 percent of the time the oldest player will not be first in line for that picture, okay? All right, number 11. A coin is tossed and a die is rolled. What is the probability the coin will be heads and the die will be an even number? So probability that I'm gonna land heads up and an even number. The probability on a coin that it will land up on heads, there's one heads on every coin, there are two sides to every coin. The probability of getting an even number. On a number cube or a die, you have two, four, and six, so there's three even numbers out of six total sides on that die. When I multiply one times three, two times six, I get three out of 12, which if I make that a simplified fraction, I get one fourth, which should be 25% of the time. Make that a decimal, multiply it by 100, 25% of the time, right? Because one quarter, 25 cents. It's a weird looking five. There we go. One fourth is my probability that I will land heads up and roll an even number, which should happen one fourth of the time. All right, number 12. A card is drawn from a standard deck and not replaced. So that's super important to note, not replaced. The second, then a second card is drawn. What is the probability that both cards are face cards? Okay, so let's think about this. I want the probability that I'm gonna get, draw a face card and then another face card. So don't forget, we've already looked at in the first video, we, I showed you that in Schoology, in your resources folder, I've put a picture of a standard deck of cards. I wanna know what are the chances that I'm going to pull a face card two times. I know there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 face cards in a standard deck of cards. And a standard deck of cards has 52. So 12 out of 52 are how many face cards I can choose from for the first pull. Okay, then a second card is drawn. And remember, I'm still holding on to that first card. I haven't put it back in the deck. It's not replaced. A second card is drawn and I also want it to be a face card, but I'm now holding one of these 12 face cards in my hand. So now there's only 11 in the deck and I'm holding a card in my hand. So now there's only 51 total cards left in the deck. So my total probability then is 12 times 11, 132, over 52 times 51, 2652. Let's see if we can get a nicer fraction. 132 divided by 2652, I should be able to because they're both even, so they at least divide in half. I get 11 over 221. Let's see what that is as a percentage. So 11 times out of 220 times, 221 times, I should get two face cards. 
Let's see what that is as a percentage. So I'm going to hit math, change that to a decimal for me, and then make it a percentage by multiplying by 100. I get 4.9% of the time, but after the 9 is a 7, so that's going to bump the 9, which will bump the 4. So about 5% of the time, I will draw two face cards in a row. Okay? All right, number 13, George rolls, George rolls a die two times. What's the probability he rolls a 4 and then an even number? Okay, so probability that I roll a 4 and then an even. On my die, there's one four on that die. All the other sides have different numbers. There are six total numbers on the die. So my probability of rolling a four the first time is one sixth. Then I wanna roll an even number. My die has number two, four, and six on it. So there are three even numbers out of six numbers on that die. So my probability that I roll a four and then an even number are one times three and six times six. Three out of 36. Three times out of 36 times is the same as one out of 12 times. So if I roll that die two times, 12 times, I should get a four and then an even number one time. Okay. As a decimal, math, change this to a decimal, multiply by 100 to change to a percentage, 8.3% of the time. All right, one last problem. What is the probability of randomly picking a point in the top section remaining of the triangle? So this is kind of an interesting one to look at. I'm looking at the probability of just landing in this section, which has this little arc here, of just this section up here. Okay, so that means it's going to be the top piece out of the whole triangle. So I'm going to have to figure out what is the area of just one of these shapes. And this isn't a triangle, right, because it's got an arc on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I can see there are three of these shapes, right? And I have the whole triangle, and inside it I'm sitting a circle. Okay, so I'm going to take that whole triangle... And I'm going to figure out what is the area of just the yellow part. Okay, that's going to be the whole triangle minus the circle, right? It's going to be the triangle minus the circle. It's going to leave me with the three yellow portions left. So my whole triangle, a triangle is one half the base times the height. So one half the base is 14. And the height they've given me over here, they've said it's 10. Okay, so 1 half of 14 times 10 is 70. So that's the area of the whole triangle, which I can fill that in over here because I needed that anyways for this piece. And then I'm going to take away the circle. So pi r squared, that's going to be pi times my radius is 3 squared, so that's going to be 9 pi. So I need to take those away, and that'll give me all three yellow sections together. So 70 minus 3 pi, I'll get a decimal, that's okay, is going to be 60.5752204. Oh, Okay, I'm just going to write down that much. Now, that's all three yellow pieces together. Okay, if I want one yellow piece, I'm going to take this number and divide by three, right? Because I need to divide it into three equal pieces. So I'm going to take this number and I'm just going to tell the calculator, divide that please by three. And I get... 20.1917. So I'll change this to 1912. 20.192. I'm rounding it to. That's the area of just this top portion. Okay. All right. So 20.192 divided by 70. I already have this in the calculator and it's not rounded. 
So I'm just going to say take that answer and divide by, so take that last answer, because it's not rounded, it's the whole thing, and divide it by 70. Now, odds are this is not going to make a pretty fraction. Math, fraction, nope. Their calculator is like, nope, that's not going to happen. You're not going to be able to make this a fraction any better than what you've got there. It's just not going to happen. So I'm going to leave it like that as my fraction, and I'm going to say as a percentage, since I have it as a decimal here, I'm going to say times 100, and as a percentage, I get 28.8%. 28.8% percent of the time I'm going to land in just that top yellow section if I'm randomly picking a point somewhere in this triangle. Okay? All right, so there is your review. If you have any questions on anything before you take your practice test and especially before you take the actual test, make sure you are checking in with your teacher and getting all of those questions answered. Thank you so much for watching.